Hi, Salam Alaikum and good morning everyone. Uh, so this is my fourth lecture for CHM 477 and today we're going to talk about hybridization. I have uh, covered a little bit of the introduction for hybridization in my lecture three and um, that was, um, excuse me, mm. it's not moving, okay where I ended my, my lecture on page 15 of my notes uh, that I prepared. <clears throat> Just a quick recap, if we used, if we use balance bond theory, we cannot correctly predict the structure of ammonia because uh, using balance bond theory, uh, the structure of ammonia is implied to have <coughs> <clears throat> NH bonds that are perpendicular to each other, which is not correct because the NH bond, the, the, not, not, yeah, the NH bond to NH bond, which is hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen bond angle is a lot bigger than 90 degrees, which is 107 degrees. So to explain this, um, scientists have come up with the concept of hybridization where the there is some kind of mixing happening between the s orbital and the p orbital before the nitrogen is ready to bond with hydrogen so the mixing that happens is called hybridization and it happens like this <clears throat> the first step of the mixing is the excitation, this is called, uh, well, th that's the um, ground state at the top here. Excitation is when one of these electrons here is being uh, excited to the 2p orbital. If you recall, the 2p orbital has slightly higher <clears throat> energy than the 2s orbital. Uh, I was talking about uh, the... Uh, and energy levels about atomic orbitals in the last lecture. So when this electron is moved into the 2p orbital, we say that electron is excited or promoted. Promotion of electron from this 2s orbital to the 2p orbital. And after the promotion or the excitation, there is hybridization, which the s and the 3 and the 3p orbitals <clears throat> mix um, to make four equivalent atom, uh, four equivalent um, hybrid orbitals. So initially, before the mixing, the hydrogen and uh, the, the uh, s orbital and the p orbitals are not equivalent. S orbital has round shape. P orbitals have um, dumbbell shape, so they're totally not equivalent. But upon mixing, upon hybridization, the four uh, orbitals that are produced are very much equivalent. They have the same shape, they have the same uh, criteria and characteristics, and that hybrid orbital is called sp3. How, how do we get sp3? Simply uh, taking from the parents. Yeah, There is one s orbital here. And there are 3p orbitals here, mixing 1s and 3p gives you sp3. And um, usually uh, <coughs> it is the rule that for each hybridization, when you mix four different atomic orbitals, you get four different hybrid orbitals. You cannot have more, you cannot have less. Yeah. So once you have uh, hybridization happening, you have four equivalent um hybrid orbitals called sp3 we can now um, uh, make the uh, prediction a correct prediction of the shape of uh, ammonia but before I go into ammonia because ammonia has um, ammonia has lone pair of electrons I'm going to deal with um, CH for a methane because methane is a simple a simpler case with no lone pair of electrons. So <clears throat> um, 
quick recap again. The SP3 orbital. Okay, let me let me go through these notes again with you so that we cover everything. The mixing of two or more atomic orbitals to form a new set set of hybrid orbitals is called hybridization. So the two non-equivalent atomic orbitals, for example, S and P orbitals, will produce hybrid orbitals with very different shape from the original atomic orbital. The shape of S is round, the shape of P is dumbbell, but the shape of sp3 orbital is neither round nor it is dumbbell, which we'll see later. The number of hybrid orbitals produced is equal to the number of pure atomic orbitals used in the hybridization process. Like I explained to you earlier, 1s and 3p orbitals Atomic orbitals, there are 1s and 3p, will produce 4 sp3 orbitals. Yeah? No, no more, no less. The same number of orbitals are produced. Now, the overlap, the covalent bonds formed are uh, through the overlap of hybrid orbital with the atomic orbital. Now you have uh, the nitrogen. When we're talking about ammonia just now, the nitrogen has hybrid orbital of sp3, then the three um, uh, hydrogen will overlap the three hydrogen orbital, which is 1s, yeah, if you recall, 1s orbital for hydrogen will overlap with the hybrid orbital to make the covalent bond between nitrogen to hydrogen. It can happen through the overlap of hybrid orbital with atomic orbital. It can also happen, any bonding, covalent bond can also happen through the overlap of hybrid orbital with another hybrid orbital. So the analogy of hybridization of atomic orbitals is the mixing of one cup of blue solution with three cups of yellow solution. So the resulting solution is exactly four cups of green solution. I hope that makes sense to you. So let's go into the first, um, the first example of hybridization, SP3. Mm, uh, and SP3 makes a tetrahedral. How is that? So let's have a look at this. Now, when one S orbital is hybridized with three P orbitals, the resultant orbitals are four SP3 hybrid orbitals, which have very different shape from the S and the P and show, as shown below. So this is how it started. One S orbital and three P orbital. This is the PX. This is the PZ. That is your PY. So these four hybridize to make um, one, two, three, and four. Four orbitals that have shape very different from their parents. Yeah. So these shapes and orientation are derived mathematically and plotted. So um, plotting the uh, equation of S and P, you will get... Um, a shape of this. What you get for sp3 is um, a small lobe. This is the this originates from the pz. Yeah, have a look at this pz. If this s orbital is hybridization hybridizing with this uh, z orbital, you are going a uh, pz orbital. You are going to have one lobe becoming fatter and this lobe becoming smaller. So that is how it looks like. So you have a smaller lo lobe at the bottom and then a fatter, bigger lobe at the top. And that comes from the Y orbital and that comes from the uh, mixing of uh, the other two. So you get this shape. So if you combine all these four, one, two, three, four, um, orbitals, the four sp3 hybrid orbitals are identical in shape, each one having a large lobe and a small lobe, as I was telling you. When combined, the small lobes of the orbitals are usually omitted from the diagram 
for clarity. So you don't need to draw the small lobe when you are drawing the combined diagram of the sp3 orbital. The resultant shape of the combined hybrid orbital agrees with the geometry of the molecule as predicted by valence shell electron peripartition. Now we are uh, connecting the hybridization with VSEPR. Um, if you recall my two lectures ago, we talked about um, VSEPR. So for example, ammonia and CH4, both are sp3 hybridized have tetrahedral geometry so if you um, imagine the four orbitals here these four orbitals when you combine them <clears throat> when you combine them you're going to get one big lobe at the top one big lobe on the side two big lobes pointing that way and that this way and you do not see the small orbitals because we omit the small orbitals to make your drawing very clear. Now when these four orbitals are put together, the angle between uh, this orbital and that orbital is 109 point. 109 point, what is the angle of what is the angle of tetrahedral? 109.4. Yeah, 109.4 degrees. So these four hybrid orbitals now are ready to overlap with the 1s orbital of hydrogen, four hydrogens to be exact. One of the 1s is overlapping with this top um, corner the second on that corner, the third on that corner, and the fourth on that corner. So when they overlap, they have, you remember I was telling you about uh, how bonds are formed? They are formed when two orbitals approach each other until the orbitals overlap. Now by overlapping of the orbitals, you get the electrons uh, being shared between the two atoms two uh, bonding atoms. So you have the good overlap here of hydrogen uh, on each corner. So what you get is the shape of um, methane to be a perfect tetrahedral shape. Yeah, perfect tetrahedral shape. Um, when you look at uh, ammonia, ammonia, can you recall the Lewis diagram of ammonia? Yeah, the Lewis diagram of ammonia is uh, one lone pair at the top and three bonding pairs pointing downwards to three corners, making tetrahedral. So this is it. So you have one of the lobes is occupied by the lone pair of orbitals. And this is ammonia. This is your nitrogen to hydrogen, another one, and the third one. So you have the perfect uh, fitting of hybridization concept with valence shell electron pair repulsion. So SP3 is actually the hybridization that is associated with tetrahedral. Yeah? So whenever we say tetrahedral, it's always SP3. So you, you by now will already um, realize that even though this ammonia looks like octahedral, uh, sorry, tetrahedral, but this lone pair is a big fat invisible bond, uh, a big fat invisible entity which cannot be seen. So effectively what you see is a trigonal pyramid, yeah? trigonal pyramid with the bond between hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen to be less than the ideal angle for tetrahedral because the angle of ideal tetrahedral is 109.4. Now, because this lone pair of electron is a big fat invisible thing that forces things away from itself. So you have this angle to be smaller than 109.4. I hope that concept is already clear to you by now.
Now, applying the same hybridization procedure for NH3, now I just want to show you um, where, how the lone pair was uh, accomplished. It can be shown that one of the sp3 hybrid orbitals is occupied by a lone pair of electrons belonging to the nitrogen. Now recall, nitrogen has five electrons, balanced electrons. Um, uh, three hydrogens give three balanced electrons, so you have eight balanced electrons. So using the Lewis, if you recall Lewis, it will have two of those um, making a lone pair. One is a single electron waiting for the second electron to make a good pair with hydrogen. So um, one is occupied by the lone pair of electrons belonging to the nitrogen central atom. So we say this lone pair has nitrogen characteristic. It doesn't come from hydrogen, it comes from nitrogen. Now, the repulsion of a lone pair is stronger than a bonding pair, as I was telling you. Therefore, H and H bond angle, which is 107.3 degrees, is smaller than the perfect tetrahedral angle of 109.5. I was wrong earlier, it was not 0.4, it was, it is now 0.5, yeah? So it is smaller. So you can imagine um, the shape of ammonia. So this is the orbital diagram for sp3 hybridized nitro nitrogen atom in ammonia showing that one hybrid orbital is occupied by a lone pair of electrons. So you have, um, this is the lone pair of electrons. So you have this waiting for your hydrogens. Now, we can use the hybridization theory to describe the bonding scheme only when the arrangement of electron pairs has been predicted by VSEPR. If the VSEPR predict a tetrahedral arrangement, then the hybridization is sp3, as I was telling you earlier. Now, you can also represent the hybridization of S and P orbitals using energy level diagram as shown below. So if you want to see how about the energy level changes during hybridization, we can, uh, we can plot this, uh, we can draw this diagram or this, this uh, energy level diagram. As I was telling you, the 2S has lower energy than the 2P. This is before hybridization. So the P3, the three orbitals of 2P, the 2PX, 2PY, and 2PZ have higher energy than the 2S. When they have hybridized to make four sp3 orbitals, hybrid orbitals, uh, S will go up will go down, yeah? Macam tu. Because um, uh, the P will be affected by the low energy level of S by coming down a little bit and the S is affected by the high energy level of P by going up a little bit. So what you get is somewhere in the middle between the two energy levels earlier to have four equivalent same orbitals, hybrid orbitals called sp3. So that is clear, isn't it? I hope you are fine with my explanation. So the example of sp3 uh, molecules are ammonia and um, methane. So I think you're ready for the next hybridization, which we call sp2 hybridization. And sp2 hybridization is for the shape trigonal planar. If you, if you recall, if you recall your organic chemistry, as, as you told me that you have learned something about hybridization, uh, during organic chemistry, sp2 would be your, um, ethene. Ethene, the carbon of ethene. Now, using VSEPR, the molecule, here it, it is giving you an example of boron trifluoride, not ethene, but it is the same. 
The molecule boron trifluoride is known to have a trigonal planar structure. Yes, you you get to this conclusion when you were drawing the Lewis diagram of not the Lewis diagram. Oh yes, the Lewis diagram of trigonal planar. So considering only the valence electrons of boron, there are two. 2s electrons and 1 2p electrons so that is your ground state of boron yeah ground state uh, valence electron of boron two electrons in the 2s one electron in the 2p so during promotion or excitation of electron one of these is promoted to there to occupy singly the 2p uh, orbitals and those that are occupied with electrons singly will hybridize. So this is hybridization of 1s and 2p orbitals. You get sp2 orbitals. Now sp2 orbitals will have the shape of trigonal planar. So you have one orbital here, the 2pz, which is non-hybridized or unhybridized so leave it there it's not going to participate in bonding at all yeah no participation of 2pz orbital in the sp2 hybridized um, molecule so when one of the 2s electrons is excited to the 2py then the three orbitals uh, which is the 2s, the 2px, the 2py orbitals are hybridized, producing three new sp2 hybrid orbitals, yeah, generated like this. So this is your s, this is your px, that's your py, making three uh, new hybrid orbitals. When you combine this green or these three hybrid orbitals and you do not draw the small lobes, what you get is this shape, this green shape here. Yep. So your boron is having three sp2 hybrid orbitals having angle of 120 between each other, each bond. And then these hybrid orbitals are ready to overlap with the, the, the with the orbital of fluorine to make boron trifluoride so the outer orbital of fluorine if you recall fluorine has seven valence electrons yeah and then the outermost is p elect uh, p orbital so the fluorine is not spherical in shape obviously because fluorine doesn't have s as its balance um as its balance orbital the valence orbital for fluorine is a p so you have a dumbbell <coughs> excuse me <laughs> you have a dumbbell shape here overlapping with your sp2 orbital to make one boron fluoride uh, bond similarly on this side and similarly on that side. So what you get is really BF3 having trigonal planar shape. Now the energy level diagram constructed for the formation of sp2 hybrid orbital is as shown below. The two, uh, one of the two, uh, the two s orbitals, the two p orbitals, three of them make a sp2 hybrid orbital with the 2pz not changing in energy level 2pz remains unaltered in terms of shape in terms of energy level 2pz remains the same before and after hybridization process the only changes are observed on the sp2 hybrid orbitals so as you can see sp2 hybrid orbitals have energy lower than 2p higher than 2s right so that's quick uh, for sp2 because you already understand the concept of hybridization now we go to the third um, hybridization which is the sp hybridization and sp hybridization is for linear so when you recall, please, can you recall what is organic compound that has linear bond? This alkyne, yeah? alkyne, 
So uh, ethane. Ethane, if you recall, ethane is hydrogen, carbon, triple bond, carbon, hydrogen. Betul? Yeah. But here I'm going to give you a different example for SP3, SP hybridization for linear shape. So using BSEPR, the molecule beryllium chloride, uh, so the, the example given here is BECL2, is known to have a linear structure. So uh, going through the same process as we did SP3 and SP2 above, we consider only the valence electrons of beryllium where there are two uh, 2s electrons but no 2p electrons so for beryllium to hybridize this electron again will be excited into the higher energy level 2p so you have uh, one electron in the 2s and the second electron goes into the 2p orbital and hybridizing the two gives you sp orbital and note that the 2py and the 2pz orbitals are unchanged yeah so when you have sp orbital, you have this is the shape it's going to take. Um, combining this red, this red will give you like that. This red beryllium uh, two uh, two hybrid orbitals of sp, uh, 180 degrees from one another, ready to overlap with the valence orbital of chlorine which is p orbital dumbbell shape so overlapping of that gives you a linear becl becl molecule the bonds will have an angle of 180 degrees between them so representation of the energy level diagram for sp orbital is like this same like before the S will go up, the P will go down to make your SP orbital and two unhybridized orbitals, which is your, which are your 2PY and your 2PZ, will remain unchanged in terms of energy and shape. So good. So there you have it. You have um, three hybridizations, uh, SP. 3 for tetrahedral, sp2 for trigonal planar, and sp for linear, all covered. And I, will, I would want to give you some general notes on hybridization. Uh, hybridization is an extension of the Lewis theory and VSEPR model to assign a suitable state of hybridization of the central atom of a molecule. First, you draw the Lewis structure. So you cannot run away from this. Lewis structure of the molecule, you predict the overall arrangement of electron pair using VSEPR, and then you deduce the hybridization of the central atom by matching the arrangement of the electron pairs with suitable hybrid orbitals as shown in the table below. Because the table below will give you a lot more than SP, SP2, and SP3 hybrid orbital. But we will start with, we will start with sp orbital. Yeah, we've gone through this before. One s, one p, make sp orbital with two hybrid orbitals, a linear, a linear molecule with becl two as an example. I hope you can still recall uh, just a few minutes ago. For sp two, you have. 1s orbital, 2p orbitals, making sp2 orbital, giving you three hybrid orbitals in the shape of a trigonal planar. Example of that is BF3. For sp3, you have 1s, 3p orbitals, giving you sp3 hybrid orbitals, providing four good sites for bonding. And this is the shape of sp3 orbital. So example of that would be CH4 and probably ammonium, ammonium ion. When the lone pair, when the lone pair on top of ammonia uh, loses one electron, and then a hydrogen goes in to bond or to make uh, an overlap with that single um, electron at the top, you get ammonium ion. So ammonium ion has the shape of 
what? Tetrahedral. Good. So, um, expanding, expanding the hybridization into uh, trigonal bipyramidal as well as octahedral. If you treat the same way, hybridization including D orbital. Now, um, atoms that have D orbitals in it will have a tendency to make um, to make uh, trigonal bipyramidal. So if you have S three p orbitals, D orbital combining, you get S p three D with five sites for bonding to give you trigonal bipyramidal. The example of which is PCL five and um, uh, moving on to S uh, 3P orbitals, 2D orbitals give you SP3D2, six bonding sites for octahedral SF6. So when you say you have a shape molecule uh, with the shape of trigonal bipyramidal, the hybridization is SP3D, but when you have octahedral uh, arrangement around the central atom, that central atom has a hybridization of sp3d2. So it's very easy, one for s, um, three for p, and two for d. So you have six, six orbitals. So that's really simple. Yep. So uh, I'll give you one example. Um, what kind of questions can be asked for this type of topic? So, example 10.4, it says describe the hybridization state of phosphorus in phosphorus pentabromide, PBr5. So, the strategy is really the same. First of all, you need to take the ground state electron configuration of phosphorus which is neon 3s2, 3p3. I hope you are familiar why we put neon here. Neon is actually a representation of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, because that is the, um, that is the noble gas. Yeah. That is at the end of the second row in your periodic table. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 is neon. So rather than writing such a long uh, electron configuration, uh, you can make, you can use this uh, short annotation, putting neon in square brackets and just spelling out the electron configuration for the valence electrons, which is 3s2, 3p3. Therefore, phosphorus atom has five valence electrons. So when you go through the process of drawing the Lewis diagram, you're going to get this structure. I hope you're not uh, still confused or still unclear about that. So you have this shape. So you have five pairs of electrons around the P. Therefore, the electron pair arrangement is trigonal bipyramidal. We conclude that P uses sp3d. So as I as the table above explained to you, five um, bonds in trigonal bipyramidal has sp3d hybrid orbital uh, bonding with bromine, and you have a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. The hybridization can be imagined as follows: that happens like this. So initially, this is your ground state. 3s2, 3p3. So this s orbital cannot go and excite itself and go into the p because the p are already occupied. The p orbitals are already occupied. So it has to go to the next d orbital, the next orbital, which is 3d. Uh, it is possible for phosphorus because phosphorus is located on the third line or third uh, row of periodic table and the third row of periodic table is a uh, hybrid, um, sorry, is, uh, um, 
shell number three and shell number three has 3D orbitals. So this 3D orbital is empty. So it is just now being used to occupy one of the electrons from the 3S upon excitation. So exciting this into there, you get you get five um, orbitals combining to make sp3d orbital and you will notice that four of the d orbitals are remain un un unchanged so this is how sp3d uh, hybridization occurs yeah these hybrid orbitals overlap and the 4p orbitals of bromine will form five covalent PBR bonds with the phosphorus because there are no lone pairs in on the P atom. The geometry of PBR3 is trigonal by pyramidal. So that is really quite clear and simple. I hope you're following this. Um, I'm going to ask you later to uh, show how sp3d2 hybridization is achieved for sf6 so be, be prepared for that i'm going to post a, a question in the telegram group so how do you predict the hybridization of a central atom this is the formula you count the number of lone pairs plus the number of atoms bonded to the central atom not the number of bonding pairs, but the number of atoms. Because sometimes one bonding, uh, one atom can have two bonding pairs for a double bond. One atom bonded to another atom can have three bonding pairs, like a triple bond. So you do not count how many bonds, but you count how many atoms. So count the number of lone pairs. Lone pairs, you have to count each one. And the number of atoms bonded to the central atom. Um, if the sum is two, you have sp hybridization. If the sum of this is uh, three, you get sp2. Four, you get sp3. Five, you get sp3d. And six, you get sp3d2 as the examples given in here. So are you okay? Good. I think that concludes our hybridization uh, topic. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure how long is this lecture. Uh, I think about just, just a little bit over half an hour. So I'm going to, um, uh, go through the next topic with you later. But before I go through the next topic with you, I'm going to post a few questions and a few practice exercise so that you can, um, test your understanding. So that's it for now. Uh, uh, I hope you are keeping safe. I hope you're keeping well. Um, keep the motivation up. I know it is hard to learn uh, uh, distant education like this. I wish you were in the same classroom with me, and I, I think you wish the same too. But never mind. Uh, during this uh, pandemic, we bear with it. We learn new skills. We learn new way of life. This is the new normal. Okay then, bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and have a good day. Bye.